Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And before we talk about today's guest, which is really going to be geeky and cool and interesting, I'm really excited about it. I do want to uh, formally introduce my Six Sigma co-host, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if you are not, which I don't know why anyone would not be, but if you are not automating your Craigslist postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I am awesome. How are you? I'm in a geeky mood. You know, our guest uh, is easy to tie our two, uh, two biggest interests, right? You know, like your, your two favorite words are automation and free. Right. I think that the, uh, most, most people listen to this podcast, their, their two favorite words might be, you know, real estate and development or programming maybe. We have a lot of software engineers in we our do. group. And I, I think the reason we, we attract so many engineers um, is because of the systems and the processes. Um, and we apply it to real estate. So today's guest is going to really help us fill in some of those geeky gaps. But before we talk to John Sanmez at simpleprogrammer.com and formally introduce him, it's time to plug away. Today's podcast is sponsored by Loan Geek. Automate getting paid via ACH and credit card using Loan Geek. No note setup fees. 50 cents flat for ACH, 2.75% for credit cards. Set it and forget it. There's no better solution out there. Loan Geek. I remember when I used to manually have to put in my loans. And now I just have to put in a little software and it's done for me. Loan Geek. Just email support at thelandgeek.com for more information to get into the next beta wave. God, Mark, can, can we like get someone to really record that for you? Because I don't know. I think, awesome. I think, God, I think, God, I think you, you need like someone a little bit more peppier or something, you know, someone excited, like manage your loans this way. I think John Sanmez liked it. I think so. Maybe. I did. It, it was, it was, it was definitely interesting. So, oh, Got my no. attention. so yeah. All right. All right. Let's talk about John. John Sanmez is the founder of simpleprogrammer.com and author of Soft Skills, a software developer's life manual. He created Simple Programmer with the goal of making the complex simple. As a software developer, he often finds that people tend to have a way of making things appear more complex than they really are. He discovered that often the simplest solutions were the best ones, although not always the easiest to derive. And he also retired early in real estate which John, tell us about that. What were you doing in real estate? So, you know, I, I sort of stumbled into it. I, I, I wasn't a genius. I didn't, I didn't have a, a super master plan. All I know is that you know, when I was 18 or I guess about, about 19 and I moved out of my parents' house, I was looking for somewhere to live and I didn't want to pay rent because I, I felt like, I just felt instinctively like paying rent would be a waste of money. So I said, I got to buy a house. <laughs> so I basically ended up, I mean, at 19 or so, you know, trying to buy a house. It's not exactly easy. No credit history, right? Not even a lot of money. Not, I didn't really have a down payment. But I, I found this, this shack for like $68,000 in Boise, Idaho. And I figured I could get some roommates or something. And I couldn't get a loan. Right. I finally, finally, I got this loan at like a 13% interest rate with a two year prepayment penalty. <laughs> and I had to dig a ditch to connect the water line to the, to the house with the sewer line in, in order to, uh, to seal the deal. But I did it and I got the property and I still own that property to this day. It's worth a lot more than, than my, what I paid for it. I'm out of that 13% interest rate, but that was really what got me started in, into the real estate investment. And, and I didn't really think about, you know, the long-term effects. I just knew that this was maybe like a smart move to do, but, uh, but what really got me pushed into it was when I, I got this opportunity as a software developer, I got this job very shortly after when I was 19, paying like $75 an hour, 
right in 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 LA and I went down there went went down to LA and I, and I thought oh man I am I'm rich I'm I'm just like you know I'm rolling in it I, I'm going to I calculated my income was like $160,000 a year and I had like per diem so I was like it was it was mostly tax free and then you know so I'm 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 running the math I'm doing the calculations I'm like okay how long will it be before I'm I'm a millionaire and uh, and so I thought, okay, well, let's see, 160,000, you know, take out taxes that are out of there. So maybe that'll leave me with like maybe 120, 110. I gotta gotta live. I can live cheaply off of like thirty thousand dollars a year. So I finally came up with a calculation. I was like, okay, I could save if I socked away everything I had, seventy thousand dollars a year, maybe. So then I'm running the calculations. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. That's ten years. It's only seven hundred thousand. 12 13 oh wait a minute inflation i forgot about inflation <laughs> so uh so I, as i run the numbers i'm like oh crap i'm gonna have to save seventy thousand dollars a year for the next like 15 to 20 years and then i'll just be a millionaire and that's not even rich and I, and and i'm making a, a crap ton of money you know as a as a young kid and and how am i gonna even hold on to this job and i gotta live frugally for all this time there's got to be a better way so I started researching what, how do people make money in the, in the, in the U S specifically, and it kept coming down to real estate. And so that's, that's what really pushed me into it. As I said, wow, either, either I'm going to like, you know, work my butt off for years and, and save every dime that I make, or I'm going to figure out a better way. And that's where I started looking at real estate. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, what do you think? I think that it's, uh, I think it's wise. I mean, the, the fact that you went out and you did the math, you figured out, you know, what, what it's going to take. I think that's a missing step for a lot of people uh, that they, they don't sit there and do the, the basic math, right? Like they just, they don't uh, figure out what their end game is going to be or what their goal needs to be. And then back, back into everything. I mean, that's the simplest way to do it is get down even to the smallest detail of how many offers you need to make in order to, to move the needle and accomplish the goals that you want. Yeah, and, and being a developer or a programmer, how did you incorporate that skill set with real estate? So, you know, I, I definitely am big on systems. I try to systemize things, right? So I want to make things as automated as possible. So that, I mean, that led me pretty quickly. Well, I, I won't say that, that uh, again, I, I like to learn things by making mistakes and getting getting beat up and then and then I learn. So it, it let, eventually led me down the path of using property management, but I will have to admit that I manage my own properties for some time and you know, I'm a pretty big guy. I, I go knock on the door and say, give me the rent. And it doesn't work. <laughs> if you had loan geek, it would have. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. There, there you go. <laughs> but, but, um, so, so I ended up like figuring out how can I streamline things? How can I get this to be fully automated as much as possible? I don't want to like, you know, take phone calls. I don't want to fix toilets and stuff. And so, came up with you know processes i've got processes for but for doing everything that i do real estate wise including making offers and 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 figuring out what is a good deal and i wrote software to you know figure that out when i was when i was younger when i was first getting into it but now i use property management companies and so i think that that's that skill set i think like you said at the beginning of the podcast this idea of like trying to automate things and and get them as much automated as possible that's something that a lot of software developers including myself highly valuable as I run my business, I do that all the time. And so that's, that's sort of what, uh, what, what connected the dots, I think for me. So you have several passive income revenue streams, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. So can you walk us through them? Sure. So, you know, the, the, I, I sort of structure it this way, like at the end, at the end of everything is, is sort of, is real estate, right? Because that's, to me, that's, that, obviously that's, that's the one that's the most reliable that you can count on. It's the, it's the only thing I consider true passive income because it always exists, right? I mean, aside from nuclear, you know, <laughs> nuclear war, you know, and, and, and things like that, pretty much real estate is always going to exist. So I sort of funnel things from my other passive income into real estate ultimately. And that's where, where, you know, I put the biggest accumulation, but I do. So I've got the real estate 
I have, uh, I've got a business, which I, which I consider mostly passive income because I sell through simple program, a lot of informational products online. And so, you know, sales roll in overnight while I'm sleeping and, and that kind of runs itself. I've also set up processes within that to, you know, I've got, I've got staff hired, but they've all got standard operating procedures and, you know, I go away for like a week or so and everything runs. So I don't, I don't have to do a, a lot there, you know, besides make it grow. Uh, and then I've done, I've done some courses for a company called Plural Site, where I've done developer training courses. It's sort of like an authorship program where I've created uh, technical training for developers and that income, just having my courses out there. I, I, last time I did a course, I think was three years ago and I still pull in a good couple hundred thousand dollars a year of of income from those courses that they they're paying me royalties. Uh, then I've written a, a book that uh, the soft skills software developers life manual, which uh, which pulls in you know it's uh, it's only a it's a it's a traditionally published book, so I only get about ten percent of the royalties, but it still ends up being you know a good t- ten to thirty thousand dollars a year depending on on book sales. And then uh, I'm trying to think what else I've got set up. Uh, I've got a couple of apps in the app stores, not much, you know, comes in from those, but that, you know, little pieces add up here and there. And uh, that's, that's, that's probably the, the, the most of it, right? Every, everything else I think that I have that passive income is really probably coming through my simple programmer business from the different pieces of that. I mean, I consider YouTube videos are, are kind of passive income, right? Because you make a lot of YouTube videos, you put them out there, you're automatically getting income on those YouTube videos, whether you're, you know, produce more or not just from the, the views. Same thing with a blog when you've got, uh, products that you sell through that blog, you know, eventually those streams would die if you don't feed them, but they're, they're pretty passive and they last quite a while once you build up enough content. So. I, I like it. Scott Todd, what do you think? <laughs> I think you're uh, I think you got a good, a good uh, strategy for passive income. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, what, what I hear John is, is I hear you saying, you know, that, that you're basically, you're feeding into this uh, passive income machine and you're leveraging all of the channels, right? It's not just one channel that you're leveraging. You're leveraging YouTube, you're writing books, you're, you're creating courses. Uh, you're, you're taking like, and I don't know the exact flow, but you could be taking those, those profits too and putting them back into real estate to buy more, which is continuing to feed the monster. And then it just keeps, keeps piling back up. Right. Um, I mean, where, where, I mean, that's kind of like the Pat Flynn model, you know, like that's what Pat's done. I don't think he's done anything with real estate, but you know, like where, where do you think someone's starting off to build their passive income? I mean, I think it's real estate, Mm -hmm. but where do you think that someone who wants to start off building their passive income should really look? Well, I, I think that, I think real estate, I, I would agree with you. I think that's, that's the the best place. And, and like, I, like you, like you suggested, you're right. And in, in your guess is that I do funnel everything from all those other passive income sources ultimately into real estate, because that's the thing that is the most secure and truly the most passive, right? I mean, a business will last even a product, even an automated, you know, put apps in the app store, whatever it is, those things have a life cycle and they will die out over time if they're not fed. Whereas real estate is pretty much going to last your generation and generations after you. So that's why I, you know, that's, that's my true security. But, but, but I think that there's a couple of things that I consider with it, which is that I, I always look at, at income sources, especially passive income sources uh, to have different attributes, right? I mean, you, you could consider certain stock options trading strategies as passive income sources, especially if you involve dividend. I mean, there's some complex, I used to do some options trading, which, which you could, you could basically make a passive income out of if, as long as you're disciplined and have a set of rules. Uh, but, uh, and, and, and like I said, a business can be sort of a passive income source, but, but I think what, what it comes down to is this idea that like, these these different attributes. So real estate, in in my mind, is uh, is one is one that has a a a fairly a medium yield, right? Not not the highest yield, but I'd say a medium yield. It has a very very low risk. Uh, if you're doing buy and hold type of you know, if you're investing, not speculating, uh, but it requires a, a higher level than average skill 
in order to get into the game. So, um, so I think that's where, why you get that, that sort of attribute mix. Whereas something like, uh, like, let's say, you know, stock market in investing, like just like inv investing in S and P 500, it has a very, very low yield. It's, it's not, you know, you know, you're getting a few percentage points, whereas real estate, you could get, you know, you could get 10 to 20%, I think, return on your investment. Or, or 300 to a thousand percent. Yeah. You raw land. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, but yeah yeah i mean you know but but in, in general like to buy what what i do buy and and, and hold uh rental uh residential rental but but i think with like with stock again like i said with s&p 500 your risk is is really low but your return is is really low and your skill level is really low you don't need to know much to do that right and and, and then you've got liquidity too i think is another factor in those so i think when you look at those the investment vehicles right i, I think the, the, what i would recommend for most people kind of based on that without going to i could i could talk for hours on each one of the, the things that I've, I've analyzed them all with, you know, spreadsheets and all that. But, but basically it comes down to this for me is, is real estate is, is the ultimately the best option because it produces such a high yield and it has such a low risk. So I always recommend that people get started in that as soon as possible, go ahead and get, cause it doesn't, and, and it takes a while to, to get that snowball rolling. So start it now whatever you can do almost no real estate investment is going to be bad uh, 20 years down the road <laughs> or 30 years down the road like you could screw up and 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 regret it in five years but if you hold on to it i guarantee in 20 years you're not going to regret it even if i mean not that you shouldn't be smart about it but i'm just saying like don't be afraid to make mistakes so get started and get that skill right away but then the second thing that i recommend is to start a business because a business is something that has the highest return i, I believe but it also requires the highest skill and it has the highest risk so it's not a great passive income source to rely on that's why even me owning a business and, and you know when i put money into my business or invest time in it i get the highest yield of anything that i could possibly do because that's just you know it's, it's a ridiculous yield but it's also the highest risk thing that i do and i know it's not going to be around for ever and i have to maintain it it's, it's also very low passive uh, passive pa passivity i don't know passivity <laughs> but it, it's not as passive right so i am taking all those profits i'm making from business i'm dumping them into real estate where i know that i've got a, a, a long and secure future even though my yield might not be quite as high as i could from the business so i, I honestly think that best thing to do for someone starting out is get real estate figured out and, and because that's going to take you a long time. It's going to take you a, a lot of skill to, to get up to that. And there's a learning curve, get that, get a plan together so that you're investing in real estate. So you can start doing, have something like buy a property every year or whatever your strategy ends up being. And, and then once you've got that figured out and you've got somewhere to put the money into now go and try and make a business and make a whole ton of money so that you can put it into real estate where you're going to be able to be more effective there and really take advantage of, of the leverage opportunity that you have you know, it, because, and then also the, the length of time, it's going to take you time. You're not going to make a whole bunch of money. I mean, depending on strategy, but if you're doing a, an investment, the kind of investment strategy I do over the long term, you're going to make a ton of money in real estate real quick. There's no such thing as getting rich uh, quick in, in real estate. So I, I don't know any get rich quick model. Honestly, <laughs> it's legal. I yeah. mean, I guess if you have a unicorn type of business like Instagram, let's say, but though, you know, there's always outliers. As far as get rich quick vehicles, I don't know of any uh, legal ones or ones that are just, you know, just you know, total dumb luck. Like, you know, it just like an Instagram. Scott Todd, do you know anything like that? If, if so, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now, Mark. <laughs> well, you thought, you thought it was land investing. Well, you know, I think that, I think that, I didn't think land investing was a, a get rich quick thing. I, yeah, but you replace your income in 17 months, three days. We have to, we have to, uh, we have to define quick. Yeah, yeah, true, true. You know, like, you know, I guess it's all, all depends on your perspective, right? But that 17 months and three days was not, you know, like it, it wasn't just like, okay, I mailed, a, uh, I mailed a few offers, you know, I mailed 20 offers in 10 days and, you know, all of a sudden all the money came in. It was, it was a grind every single day. It was like, yeah. it was, it was showing up every single day, seven days a week. And, you know, like trying to be as diligent as possible. 
And that's really what it takes is making, making a number of key decisions that really get you to where you need to be. It, it becomes kind of like, um, I mean, Mark, you know, in a few weeks in a few podcasts ago, I talked about, you know, Grant Cardone's be obsessed or be average. Oh, yeah. I was obsessed with everything about land investing. There, nothing else existed. Uh, of course, my family, but when I was, when I had a moment, I was thinking about areas. I would scour the Google earth looking for areas that I thought would be of interest. I spent lots of time on there. So it's not, I mean, it, it's not a get rich quick where you kick your feet back and, and let the money come to you. It was a grind. Yeah, actually, um, I, I agree. So John, you know, 19, hmm. I don't know many 19 year olds that are thinking about long-term wealth or passive income, unless, you know, your father is like Scott Todd or myself, where that's like, you know, what we think about all day long, right? Then we pass that down to our children and our children ignore us. And then we're like, I know you're ignoring, us, you're ignoring me for now. Yeah. But one day you'll thank me and, you know, here you go. Welcome to your first fourplex. We're going to get three renters in. That's going to be your first home. And then blah, blah, blah. And we're going to build your wealth from day one. But I, I digress. So John, how did you pick this up? Hmm. You know, that it's tough. I, I didn't really come, I, I came from a background. My, my dad was air force. So he was, you know, we were kind of like lower middle class. Right. So, you know, cause he was enlisted air force. He wasn't an officer or anything. So we moved around a lot. I, I didn't really have any, I mean, most of my life I have not really had mentors. I've, I've been kind of, I've always said that I'm the bushwhacker. <laughs> I go and I blaze the trails uh, and I make a lot of mistakes. I just, I'm not afraid to make mistakes. That's the thing is I'm not afraid to fail and to screw up uh, and I do all the time but then I eventually figure it out and that's you know I think that's what what happened here is it's just I, I had this idea I guess you know to, to come back to, to your question I had this idea that I didn't want to work for someone else for my whole life like I, I, I've always been sort of a, a rebel in, in the fact that like I, I don't like people's rules I don't like you to tell me what I'm qualified to do or not or how I should live my life and I don't I, I wanted to have freedom. I wanted to get to a point where I could do what I wanted with my life. I, I sort of have this theory that like in life and I've kind of developed it over time, which is that we are all born with a mortgage on our lives, right? Because when we, as soon as we're born, you, you, you have a debt to pay. Like you're a slave. Like you, 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 you we don't, we don't, we don't uh, give an, give, or we're not given an alloc, uh, an allotment of food and, and shelter and, and whatnot. We, we have to, we've got an upkeep cost, you know, every, every morning we get up, it's like, bam, we're negative, whatever, you know, a hundred bucks or whatever it is. And you got to work that day to, to get to the positive. And so, you know, I wanted to get to the point where I had built, where I was even, where, where, where I was level, where I didn't have a mortgage. I paid off the mortgage on my life and, and I didn't have to work for someone else as a slave in order to, to survive. I, you know, and so that's, that, that was the kind of thinking that was in my head is, is instead of saying, this is how you're supposed to do it. You go to job, you go to college, you know, you get good grades, you get a job, you work for 50 years and then, and then you retire. My, my mindset was how can I escape? How can I get out of the system? I'm a slave right now. I have slave owners that I have to work for and, and I, you know, I have to work to live, to eat. Uh, how can I get out? How can I break that system and get out of it? And that's, that's what I was thinking from that age. I didn't, you know, some of these thoughts are kind of, you know, I, I, I didn't have the words for them that, that I have now, you know, looking back and, and understanding what I'm trying to help other people to do now. But I had that feeling. I had that idea that I don't want to be trapped. I want to have freedom. And the only way to have freedom in this world is to have financial freedom. I think you're a precocious kid, John. Because <laughs> I, I think most people discover that in their 40s. Um, or maybe late thirties, like they've got to go through so much pain, so much suffering. And then they wake up one day and be like, Oh my gosh, I'm on the back nine of my life and I have no freedom. Right. Um, and then they, they're in enough pain to go th do something that makes them, you know, a little uncomfortable, but also super excited and, and hopefully get to the next level in their life. But to do it, as young as you did when you've got, you know, let's face it, girls, right? Like they're not interested. Like, you know, like when you're 19, you're pretty much 
you, you're pretty much focused on hedonistic type of stuff, um, parties and girls and, or, you know, and all that stuff. And then one day you wake up, you're like, holy cow, where'd my 20s go? I've been, <laughs> I've been working all this time, paying all these taxes. And I got nothing to show for it. And, you know, so, you know, given that your dad was in the military, what did he think of this? Like, you kind of like, I'm dropping out in a way and doing this alternative thing. And I wonder if he understood you. Oh, God. No, no, he didn't. Uh, I was just thinking about the, you know, when, when I bought one of my, my townhouses, you know, no offense to my dad, you know, he's a great guy, but he did not get it. He gets it now, like, but he did not get it then. And, you know, I, I bought this townhouse that, that was a good deal, right? I was putting 10% down on it. And, you know, and I had, I was going to cash flow positive on this thing. And I ran the numbers and I worked it out. And, you know, I called him up, excited to tell him I was buying this townhouse. And he basically, I, I don't know, like, I, I won't say the exact words, but it was basically, are you an effing idiot? <laughs> You're buying a townhouse? A townhouse? Did you know a townhouse is a, you know, and he just went off and he's like, I can't believe you would do this. It's so stupid. Why would you do this? You know, just, and you're going to rent this thing out. And it was just, it was this long, long conversation of him just uh, browbeating the heck out of me for being such an idiot. And yeah, so, and then the next property I bought it, I, I pretty much stopped calling him when I stopped, started buying properties and, and, you know, and it took a long time to, to really have those, those investments pay off. But I, I knew I had the plan in my head. I'd, I'd run it through, you know, I think at that point or at some point, you know, I'd read uh, Gary Keller's book, uh, The Millionaire Real Estate Investor. And I was like, okay, because I like that book because he charts it out if you've read that book. And he's like, this is what's going to happen over 30 years. Like, this is a realistic like this is what you know you got the patience you got the time this is how it's gonna what you're gonna see and and to me it made sense i read, did my own spreadsheets and I, I was like okay this is a plan like if i buy one house a year in in 30 years i will guarantee be rich like there's no way that that's this is not possible so this is you know and 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 that was worst case scenario best case scenario was it happens in like 15 or 10 years you know with, with property going up but even if property didn't go up and it just paid off the houses every in, in 30 years i'd i'd be able to sell the house that was completely paid off that i bought on the first year and live off of that and live for the next 30 years. Like, so I just, in my mind, I was like, this is the way there's, there's no way th that this, this can't happen. But, uh, but yeah, I, <laughs> I faced a lot of resistance, not just from my dad, you know, but from, from everyone around me. I mean, especially my friend, like you said, you know, being in the twenties, like I would go out to a club and we'd be, you know, it'd be like 2 AM and I'd be like, uh, you know, I'd go home and everyone else would be crashed out of my place, you know, and, and it's like 7am and I'm up and I'm getting ready and I'm going to work. Right. Cause I, you know, that it was like, I could, I kind of towed the line. I, I would, I, I would have more acquaintances than friends. Right. It was like, I, I would not let them bring me down. I was always the guy that's like, that was going there to work that was getting stuff done, you know, and, and still, still maintaining somewhat of a social life. But, but yeah, but they, they didn't understand it. Awesome. Awesome. See, well, he was obsessed, Mark. He was obsessed. He was obsessed. And that's what it takes. Honestly. You, you I love that you, book. That is such a great book. That, um, that, that book is good. Yep. All right. Well, John, it's time to put you on the spot now and All ask right. for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? So, you know, I was actually, I was thinking about suggesting some of Grant Cardone stuff, but it sounds like your, your listeners are already, uh, you, you, you probably already told them about that. Uh, based on that. I, I love his stuff. It's Suggest great. away. What do you got? Uh, but I just came back from Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within this weekend. And I am a big fan, like, uh, you know, I'm not a hundred percent like a, a, of, of everything that Tony Robbins does, but I, I, I think that going to Tony Rob, I went to date with destiny last year and I did, this was my first time going to unleash the power within. And I think going to a Tony Robbins event is a, a seminar is a life changing kind of experience that a lot of people that, 
if you're stuck in a, in a kind of mindset, if you, if you, if you feel like you can't do things, if you really have a lot of things that are holding you back in life, this is a great, a great, he's a great resource for, for like getting you unblocked mentally and making you like really, you know, connect with your, your passion and to really, you know, go for it. So I think that that's, that's what I'd recommend is go, go get connected in some way with, uh, with a Tony Robbins event, whether you go to unleash the power within, or even if you just pick up his, his, tapes you know he's got some really good good t tapes i guess they're they're dvds or <laughs> digital downloads now but but he's definitely been someone that's really uh that i found to be really inspiring in, in my life and, and and i i mean there's drastic changes since i started you know paying attention to his stuff so yeah i love it i, I love our power on youtube uh, uh yeah you know fantastic video um very motivational i am now taking cold showers because it's Tony Robbins. Yep. Um, and I, you know, at first I hated it. And now I'm like waking up and I'm just, you know, like I feel alive. I see you're doing the treadmill walking too. That's uh, have, have you, are you on a, have you lost some weight or on a weight loss program? Yeah, Johnny, you don't know me, but I, before, you know, a year ago, I was 500 pounds. Are you serious? No, no, no. <laughs> just no, 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 no. I, you know, um, you know, sitting's a new smoking. I've always been kind of fit and always kind of been like, yeah, into that kind of stuff. So I just got a treadmill desk years ago. And um, I'll tell you what, it was interesting though, is when I first got it, I did quickly lose 15 pounds. Yeah. And my wife's like, you're too thin. So now I'm back to eating carbs, but um, okay. yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But I do think I, you know, there is something about the mental piece of it. Like we're talking and I'm walking and um, you know, I love it. So yeah, I, I had a treadmill disc set up for a while and I and I used to do it about like a couple hours a day while I was working. And then whenever I got on calls, I would be on the treadmill. That's why I related is I because call time is the perfect time for, for treadmill desk. Uh, right now I've got a standing desk is what I've and I just stand all day long now because I, I, I found I could only do the treadmill for about a few hours and I'd, I'd up the incline and stuff like that. And it, it worked out well. But now I'm um, experimenting with the standing desk and I'm, I'm liking that too for the same reason like you said too it's just that mental like i feel like i'm sharper when i'm standing for the, than i am when i'm just sitting there so yeah i find my feet hurt when i stand and i they don't hurt when i'm walking but i have flat feet okay. um, Scott todd swears by this foam thing he's got the standing desk okay i, I do love my standing desk i've got the standing desk i got the the cushion pad underneath it yep uh when i stand uh, and then when I get tired, I just, I lower it cause mine, mine, I can raise or lower. I'll lower it and I'll sit on a bar stool or something. But I find like when I'm doing podcasts or calls or, uh, coaching sessions, I just feel like I have more energy when I'm standing up. Um, as opposed to just kind of sitting there, you feel like tired, drained, you know, your body hurts, your back hurts. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I got the pad too. And it's uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it so far. So yeah, that's great. Well, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? All right, Mark, <clears throat> this one, uh, this one, I, I am, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm excited. I don't have it yet, but I've ordered it and it's the website is rights notes.com like W R I G H T S notes.com. And what's cool about this is you can literally create your own customizable notebook. So like wow. you choose, you choose the pages. So if there's a format that like you, you like want to follow on a daily basis or a format that you want to stick to, maybe you're a software designer, software uh, developer, or uh, you need, you need, uh, you know, the, the, um, well, the wire, uh, I just went blank. The wire, uh, what's it wire frames. Oh yeah. Let's say you need paper with wire frames or notebooks with wire frames. You can choose that as an option. You can choose graph paper, line paper, blank paper. You can literally get down to like create the entire notebook based on the, on the design that you want. That's pretty cool. That's cool. I love it. I love it. Well, my tip of the week is learn more about John at simpleprogrammer.com. And, um, and John, what can we learn at your site? Really, you know, it's kind of funny. I, I, I say everything and I'm not kidding because what, what, I, what I really do, like what my business is now, 
is that I teach software developers all of the life skills that are non-technical. So you can kind of think, like I mentioned Tony Robbins, I kind of try to be the Tony Robbins for software developers. And I, I go from all the areas of your life, from everything from fitness to finance to relationships and mental attitude and success and motivational you know, t- type of things. All of that, I, I pretty much cover there. So a lot of it is on my YouTube channel, which, which is, you can find from, from the Simple Programmer site. But I pretty much... I pretty much run the gambit. I, I read like, you know, like 60, 70 books a year, a lot in the self-development space. So I, I sort of consolidate a lot of that and, you know, and I try to live it as I'm, as I'm trying to improve my life and I share that. So. Yeah. I'll be honest. When I, when I first saw simple programmer, I thought, Oh, this is only going to be interesting to our, you know, uh, software developer, software engineer friends, but it really is. Um, there really is sort of this, uh, you know, geeky Tony Robbins bend simpleprogrammer.com that applies to everyone. So I'm, I'm bookmarking your site myself. And, um, and you know, here's some, like, this is interesting. Like here's some of the, the videos on here. Stop procrastinating, work like it matters, code your way out of debt. Now code your way out of debt. I'm probably not going to do, but still, you know, successful programmer mindset. Don't be effing lazy. Um, you know, how to deal with bad days. Uh, you know, uh, how to manage a full-time job, master's degree, and business all at once. Um, protect your meetings, productive time. But I wish I knew before I jumped into iOS part two. I mean, this is all very interesting stuff. Uh, the necessity of creativity, right? All the books I read in 2015. Here we go. I'm going to do this. 57 books he read. Um, and he talks about how he picks his books. So this is cool. So I want to thank you, John. Um, I want to thank all the Art of Passive Income listeners and go to learn more at simpleprogrammer.com. And let's not forget, give Scott Todd some love. Go to landmoto.com forward slash wholesale and get some wholesale land. Um, but most importantly, you should go to postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek and start automating your Craigslist postings and give me some love. Go to frontierpropertiesusa.com, get some wholesale land if you can't find anything from Scott. And of course, go to thelandgeek.com, download for free the Passive Income Blueprint, get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes, and get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. And don't forget about automating your payments with loangeek.io. I want to thank all the listeners and, uh, you know, just do us a favor. The biggest compliment we can get is if you subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. It takes about 20 seconds to do so. Do it. And uh, let freedom ring. What do you think, Scott Todd? Let freedom ring, baby. John, say it. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring. All right. Thanks, everybody.